starting with news from Sri Lanka. After days of shutdown following violent anti-government protests in the island nation, Sri Lanka's besieged presidential office is set to reopen today. The presidential secretariat, which was stormed by a sea of demonstrators earlier this month, is set to return to functioning under a tight security cover. According to reports, secretariat staff to resume their work from the site today and President Vikram Isinghe to return to the building in a day or two. The site, which had been blocked by protesters for nearly 100 days, saw massive unrest on the 9th of July, forcing former President Gotabaya Rajapaksa to flee the country. Widespread anger over the country's worsening economic crisis saw protesters storm the colonial era building. The resumption of operations, it also comes days after a violent police crackdown on peaceful protesters. United Nations human rights groups have condemned President Vikram Isinghe for using violence against unarmed protesters. The violent protests have, the protests have saw, uh, seen incredible damage to the building with many antique items missing. Newly elected president said he respects the rights of the protesters to peacefully undertake their demonstrations, but has asserted that he will not allow another government building to be occupied. Vikram Singhe also reportedly told diplomats that non-violent protests will be allowed to continue, including in the commercial capital of Colombo. Protesters, however, have time and again said that they will continue their demonstrations despite the crackdowns. We are protesting for a just society and we are being attacked brutally and we condemn and say we will continue this protest of love, whatever the attack they are going to give. Even today they might attack us, but we will resist and we will face it. Meanwhile, a rights group documenting alleged abuses in the island nation also filed a complaint with a Singapore's Attorney General seeking the arrest of former President Gotabaya Rajapaksa. The group has submitted a 63-page complaint accusing Gotabaya of breaching the Geneva Convention. Rajapaksa submitted his resignation from Singapore on the 14th of July, a day after fleeing Sri Lanka. Now, for more on this, our correspondent, Dasuni Athoda, is joining us live from Colombo. Dasuni, what is the latest? What can you tell us about what's happening on ground currently? Well, good morning, Ham. Well, certainly there seems to be some form of a normalcy that is uh, sort of trying to be instilled here in Colombo and across the island as well. Like you mentioned earlier, yes, uh, the presidential secretariat uh, will be a fully operational, a fully functional building from today onwards. Now, today, first, the staff will be entering the premises, arranging the place and making sure it is uh, fully ready for the president, President Ranil Vikramasinghe, to start working from there. So that's the latest. However, just a few meters away from the presidential secretariat is the main protest site village that is called the Gota Go village. Now, these protesters have made it very clear that they intend to stay on at that particular site because that is also Sri Lanka's official agitation site, which allows for any and every protester to come there mm. and voice their concerns. So the Gotago village will be just remaining as it is. However, the presidential secretariat is now free from protesters and uh, will be open for its official use. Right, absolutely. Now, a, f a complaint has also been filed with Singapore's Attorney General seeking the arrest of former President Gotabaya Rajapaksa. Now, what can we expect on that front going forward? Yes, even though the attention largely, by and large, now is with the new president, uh, people haven't forgotten former President Gotabe Rajapaksa, which is why there are now mounting calls for him to be held accountable uh, for, uh, for the uh, accusations that are being leveled against him. Uh, however, this is a case that has been filed in Singapore, is my understanding. So there will be some form of legalities in terms of extradition and how this case will move forward. So we will have to wait and see in that regard. But definitely, given the fact that uh, former President Gotabe Rajapaksa is now no longer president, which means he has lost uh, all of his immunity, uh, will be very interesting to see in terms of how rights groups and lobbying activists will sort of use this to their advantage to uh, hold him accountable. Right, absolutely. Well, Dasuni, thank you so much for bringing us all the latest on that. We will, of course, continue to track this very closely.
Vion is now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.